Welcome to a Legendarium special about Roudskinna, the Icelandic Red Book of Black Magic. In this episode, we will learn about a very historical bishop who wrote a book of magic, and a very legendary student who made for a gripping cautionary tale, even if he didn't exist. Gottskalk Nikolausen came into the world during the year 1469 in Iceland. He came from a good Christian family, steeped in service to the church. His uncle Olaf even served as the Bishop of Holar. From 1496 until his death on December 8, 1520, Gottskalk too served as the Bishop of Holar, inheriting the job from his uncle. However, Gottskalk's actions could not be further pulpit. Gottskalk kept a mistress named Gurdon and begat two children by her named Odd and Gurdon. He also took a second lover named John's daughter, with whom he had a daughter named Kristen. Historical records describe him as manipulative, ambitious, and cruel. More interested in wealth and power than his faith, he started to explore the dark knowledge of ancient witchcraft. Witchcraft helped to bring reason to an unreasonable world and predicted the unpredictable, in effect science for pre-scientific societies. For centuries, Icelanders used magic spells for both practical everyday purposes and more nefarious goals. In time, magic used for the darkest purposes became Gottskalk's consuming obsession. This led him to write a book over 30 years that became known as Raudskinna. Also called the Book of Power, Raudskinna took its name from a red cover engraved in gold-lettered runes. The main goal of the book involved creating and mastering such powerful magic as to have control of Satan and then the world. Supposedly it made for fascinating and terrifying reading. Its spells included summoning utter-sucking demons to steal goat's milk or forcing someone to fall in love with you for reproductive purposes. It also included instructions on making necropants, a pair of trousers made using the dried skin of a man from the waist down. When used in a certain ritual, it provided the wearer with a limitless supply of coins. One stay for raising a ghost involved writing runes on the scalp of a horse using a mixture of seal blood, fox blood, and human blood, drawing runes on black paper with raven bile, and then placing it in the nest of a brooding raven produced a shield of terror. When held up to enemies, those foes saw not a man holding a shield, but a hundred fiery dragons. By the time of his death, Gottskalk became known as a dangerous and powerful man who knew black magic better than any person who lived in Iceland at the time. When he died during the winter of 1520, Icelanders buried Raudskinna with him, locking away its dark secrets forever. Two centuries after the death of Gottskalk, a man named Lofter arrived at the cathedral school in Holar, where Gottskalk had been a bishop. By then, Iceland embraced the Reformation, and only a generation before Loftor's time, Iceland went through the Burning Times, an unpleasant period when Icelanders threw both books of magic and those believed to read them into the flames. And it is possible the story of Loftur was told not as a historical record, but as a warning to those who dared to dabble in black magic. Indeed, people still feared the awesome power supposedly held by Gottskalk and within Gottskalk's book. When Loftur mastered a book called Graskina, or Grayskin, also filled with magic spells, Loftur knew enough to make mischief, but he soon grew bored with this and began seeking the same dark knowledge that attracted Gottskalk. For nine summers and nine winters, Loftur feverishly studied the black arts day and night. By the end of that time, he could recite every banned verse of every forbidden book at the library. Perhaps the cathedral school needed to improve its security. One day, when Lofter traveled home for Christmas, he decided to try out his power. He ironed the hands and feet of his chambermaid before putting her in a harness and riding her home through thin air. 
The ordeal drove the woman mad and left her bedridden for the rest of her days, yet she could not speak of her torment so long as Loftur lived. One day he asked another student to help him raise all the dead bishops of Holar buried in the cathedral. When the student refused, Loftar, reasonable as always, murdered him. According to legend, Loftor then walked around the church and chanted spells to summon Gotskalk and retrieve his book, the Raud Skinna. When Gotskalk did not return from the grave like a good boy, Loftor mocked Christian rites by turning the Psalms into praises for the devil and shamefully confessed his good deeds. Three crowned dead bishops raised from the dead, followed by the others. Some would cover their hands to avoid looking Loftor in the face. Others would look at him but then turn away. At last, a dead man arose bearing a staff in his left hand and a red book under his right arm. He did not re-wear a crucifix on his chest, and he looked unkindly at the other dead bishops. Lofter then realized that he faced Gotskalk, who said scornfully, You chant well, my son, and better than I would have expected, but you will not get my Raud Skinna. Loftor then changed the blessing and the Lord's Prayer into praises for the devil, and the church shook like a straw in the wind. A student, watching in the belfry, thought he saw Gotskalk move closer to Loftor and thrust a corner of the book towards him. Gripped with terror, that student rang the church bell and all the bishops, including Gotskalk, fell back into the earth. According to legend, Loftor fell into such anguish that the work of nine years had been thwarted that he went mad and sailed a boat into the ocean, where a hairy black claw dragged him into the depths. As part of his eternal punishment, Loftor would be cursed with the knowledge that he would never become as powerful as Gotskalk, which was torture to him. No one knows for sure what happened to the book itself. Some say the church destroyed the Red Book in secret, and others believe it is hill- still hidden somewhere, waiting to be found by another loft tour. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.